you got them. Yes, we did. You're all wet, sir. Yes, we are. <laughs> Sir, about the football game Sunday. There could be trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, sir, a bookie was killed in Las Vegas last week, and locally there's been very heavy betting on the game Sunday. Now, maybe they tie in, maybe they don't, but lots of bookies are coming into town for the game. Bookies don't come into town to watch football, Sergeant. They have scouts for that. They get together only when they have a problem. I understand, sir. The question is, what's the problem? Put out some feelers. I'll bet you it has something to do with football. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sandy King with another Hawks Eye View, your inside pregame look at your team. Today, we have an unusual opportunity to get some inside facts as we talk to Lowball Lewis, the team trainer. Hi, Lowball. Hi, Sandy. Well, first of all, Lowball, tell me, what is the condition of Vic Whalen's leg? Now, the doc says his leg's a lot better, but not as good as those. Oh, come on, Lowball. We're on tape here. I'm going to rewind this thing. We've got to start all over. Oh, anytime. Ryan, I told you to keep these series of plays in order. What are you doing to me? Hi. What are you doing here? I can't coach the team with you. Are you standing around like that? Hello, Mrs. McMillan. Hi, Mr. Royce. Nice to see you. You too. You got a cigarette? Uh, no, I don't smoke. Neither do I. Now, Mrs. McMillan has come for that autographed football. Uh, football? Oh, well, yeah, I gave it at a kid, Whizzer. You know, the kid that hangs around. Hey, Whizzer! <laughs> Whizzer! Do they bite? <laughs> Only when they lose. <laughs> Where is that kid? Hey! Who's got that special autograph football? Look around for it. How many white footballs have we got? Everybody, let's look for that white football. Coach, I think that could be it. Yeah, that looks like it. Well, uh... Oh, come on, Lobo. Do you mind? We're trying to do a show here. Oh, sorry, but... Wow. Yeah, right, wow, right. Well, let's start over again. I see you found it. Yes, Father Monahan and the kids are really gonna dig this. Oh, Mr. Royce! I'll be right back, Sandy. Oh, you're beautiful, Lobo. You are beautiful. Did you get a chance to think the over that? The answer is no, Lobo. I'm the owner and the manager of a football team. I'm not a benevolent organization. Oh, but I really need As it a trainer, time. you make a great storyteller. Last time it was your transmission. The time before that, it was your grandmother. Uh, no, it's no story this and time. And no it's... loan either, Lobo. Mr. Royce, maybe I can... It's all right. This will only Look, take a minute. can we talk about this? What is this, a right? Chinese torture? No is no is no. You got a cigarette? Oh, sure, sir. Right here. Get out of here. You know I've given up smoking. Poor guy. I'm the poor guy. They're always hitting me up for money. Timber, Lowball, Vic Whalen, Sandy King. What am I, a money fountain? Well, see you later, Mr. Royce. Thanks a lot again. Whether you notice this, but I'm not one of the players. Oh, I did. That's why I tackled you. I didn't want you to go off the field without my autograph. You're Billy Benton. Oh, you know me, huh? Who doesn't? Well, I don't know you. Sally McMillan. Married. Oh, heartbroken. Sure. You better sign right there. Sure, who's it for? It's for Father Monahan's school for boys. Father Joe, too much. I was one of his boys. I was raised in the orphanage. He's the only family I ever had. Hey, why don't I go with you when you deliver the ball? To the orphanage? Sure. Oh, wow, the kids would go crazy meeting you. I've got to get the rest of their autographs first. Okay, good. I'll give me time to practice my passes. Maybe next time you'll connect. Right. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sacramento Street, Brady. It might be a little bit faster. Right, sir. How far is Father Monahan's school for boys, Brady? About 20 minutes by car, sir. Three if you walk. <laughs> I'll walk. I made the mistake of taking the car. Traffic oh. was as usual. Oh, you should do something about that, Commissioner. I intend to. I'm going to sell the car. Mac, you know Billy Benton. Hi. Hi. He volunteered to join me this oh, afternoon. Oh, great. It's a pleasure. You have great legs. Thank you. I mean hers. I agree, especially the left one. Here. There. Oh. <coughs> well, I guess I've had enough to drink. Sorry, darling. How'd you two meet? Oh, he tackled me. He tackled you. Al, I didn't know that she was married, and I didn't realize she was so big. Be careful now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose. Me? I know it. No. <laughs> oh, right in the eye. Now, that's what I like. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, every once in a while, I get caught holding. But I get to pay the penalty. If I weren't in training, I'd drink to that. Why don't you eat to it? You could join us for dinner tonight. No bachelor wants to have dinner with a quiet, sedate, old, heavily married couple. Where? No matter how charming we are. Hey, Commissioner, that's not true. I'm aware of my reputation, but that only sells tickets. <laughs> if I had my choice, I'd much rather be with my friends. There, I told you, so you're going to have dinner with us tonight. Well, <laughs> thanks, but I can. I have a couple of dates, and well, I... bring her along. Bring both of them along. We'd love it, wouldn't we? Sure so... we would. Well, they're a little different, you know. <laughs> well, any time you can join us, please do. You have the football? Yes, I got the football. Isn't it this, neat? This would mean a lot to Father Monaghan. He'll put it in permanent exhibition in the trophy case. I don't think so. Why? I thought it was for the kids. Wow. Something is smudged and then it says, is trying to kill me. over there, and I don't see Harlan Royce. Well, listen, I got a change in practice. I'll see you people later, huh? Right. And right. You talk to Vic Whalen, I'll talk to Sandy King. One step slower, and I can keep up with you. Well, Vic, for a guy who's not going to be in there very much this year, you're sure taking it with a smile. Well, look, I'm a pro. Billy helps the team, that's all that matters. I'm for the guy. Since you're not going to be playing much, won't it be difficult to stay in training, uh, follow the rules? Keep that curfew, especially for a bachelor. <laughs> well, anything can happen. You gotta stay in shape. Right. Well, our time is up. Thank you, Vic Whalen, for this talk and your honest comments. This is Sandy King closing out another Hawk's Eye View. Thanks, Sandy. Sorry it didn't work. Huh? What do you mean? You stirring up trouble. You worried about losing your job? Vic? Mr. King, there's a question I'd like to ask you, well, if Vic you don't Whalen mind. Vic Whalen is some terrific actor. Actor? Well, Benton takes the ball out of his hands, the bread out of his mouth. He's got nothing but compliments, don't you, Billy? Oh, you signed this football for my wife. Hey! Hey! Something's happened! Hey, come quick, will you? There's big trouble! Yeah, go ahead. Commissioner? His name was Willie White. We all called him Wizard. A real nice kid. What did he do? 
Oh, he just ran there and, you know, he said, go for it. Go for this, go for that. Enright, see what you can find out about it. Yes, sir. Looks like a kitchen knife. Probably from in here. Here, take this down to headquarters. Check this out. Yes, sir. Anything so far? Uh, more prints than we can handle. Who would have left the field during practice? Everyone goes on and off the field. Phone calls, towels, men's room. There's no way of counting. All right, Lowball, tell me exactly how you found the body. Sure, and uh, I'll show you. Come on. See, I was coming down this, uh, this corridor here on my way to the rubdown room, and I made the turn here, and I, uh, walked on by without thinking what I saw, and I got clear down to here, and suddenly I thought, frozen shoelaces. So I went back and opened the box, and he fell out. You couldn't have seen any frozen shoelaces. The counter's in the way. Now, why did you open the refrigerator door? Well, I was uh, looking for a soft drink, see, and uh, sometimes uh, they leave them in there. And they, uh, they leave, you know, mustard and ketchup, and I, I take them home. All right, Lobo, that's all for now. Doing. The boy's dead. <sighs> There's nothing as desolate as an empty stadium. It's like a big carton with 90,000 empties. McMillan! Why can't I leave the field? We gotta get this story in the air. You'll have to wait. We want to talk with you later. I'm a suspect! Everyone's a suspect. You worked on the city desk for over two years. You know how we operate. Stick around. Thanks a lot, McMillan. Can I go home, or am I a suspect? Did you do it? No. OK, then you can go home. No, I can't. I left my car at Father Monahan's. Well, then why don't you wait for a few minutes? We'll drive you over there. OK. I feel like walking. I think I'll meet you in the parking lot. Okay. Bye, darling. I could use a drink. How about you? Yeah, I could use it. But I'm not in training. <laughs> what, are you adopting me? Did you adopt Wizard? No, it's just the opposite. He adopted me. Uh, I guess I did. What do you know about him? Ah, uh, he had a crooked smile. He needed attention. Nothing really. Kids get hung up on football players, you know that. Yeah. He got my sandwiches for me. Got my bottled water. Ran my errands. I gave him a couple of bucks, a pat on the back. What are you looking at? Bloodstains on your shirt. Did you ever get hit by a 300-pound tackle? Go check. It's your job, isn't it? That's right. It's my job. I'll keep it. Hey, Billy, I... Oh, it's all right. He's one of ours. I think. Oh, I got a lead on the kid's family. They're sharecroppers. I want to pick up the expenses for the funeral. Why? I feel sorry for the kid. No, because he liked me. Commissioner. Mm-hmm. Look, uh, Royce left about a half hour ago, but we found the kid's bike. Good. Now, Billy. Hmm. Don't leave town. Exactly. This is Wizard's bike. Boy, it's so new. And expensive, especially on a couple of bucks a day. Mm-hmm. You know, for a young bike, it's got an awful lot of mileage on it. Wow, it does have a lot of mileage on it, doesn't it? What do those look like to you? Well, they could be bookie slips, sir, but I wouldn't bet on it. I would. Check the code of the vice squad and see if you can find a way of getting this bike down to the lab. Oh, but I already have. gonna go to the lab and end up in the hospital. If Whizzer was a bag man. What's a bag man? A bag man is one who collects money from the runners. What's a runner? A runner, Sally, is someone who collects money from the betters. Maybe he was killed because he knew something he shouldn't. 
didn't like how the next game was going to turn out. Four days before it's played. One more question. What? Are you coming home for dinner tonight? Depends on the answer to the one question. I love you. That's not the question. It certainly is the answer. Okay. Stuffed peppers. What? That's what we're having for dinner tonight. Oh, I love them too. <laughs> Be careful. Home. Both of us together. Well, it's a good thing we keep a spare one in the potted plant. That's for sure. I used it the other day. Listen, I have good news. I just saw Al about placing a bet on the Hawks. You're not supposed to bet with a bookie. Especially not Al. Mac just got him off. Yeah, but with Al, we only have to give six points. Earlier this morning, it was 15. That means the betting odds have dropped. Really? Yeah. Good for that. That was supposed to be with Grace. That way it'd be a nice, friendly $2 wager. Yeah, but the odds with Al are better. And $2 is $2. This one needs water. I still think the maid would have been a better better. Listen, Mrs. McMillan, mm -hmm. could you have used the spare key yesterday and left it inside the house after you used it? Yes, I could. Did you? Yes, I did. What are we going to do? Uh, oh, I think we're going to go inside. That's a lovely idea. I wonder why the point spread changed. I'll ask Mac. He'll know. You're not going to tell him. Well, I have to tell him. Well, if you tell Mr. McMillan that the odds are changing, he's going to figure out that I'm placing bets. And betting's illegal. I'll tell him without incriminating us. How? Uh, don't worry. I'll tell him so that he won't know about the bet. Uh-huh. You want a bet? Hi, honey. Concocted for your pleasure. I hope it pleases you, my lord. Uh, taste this. Why? Because I think you're trying to poison me. There's no other explanation for this preamble you just delivered. <laughs> I have something to tell you. What? But I'll only tell you if you promise that you won't ask me how it is I know what it is I'm going to tell you. Okay, how do you know? I'll ask you before you start. I can't tell you. I, I don't want to hurt an innocent party. Who isn't very innocent? I'll get to that. Arriba. Arriba. Abajo. Abajo. Al centro. Al centro. Al dentro. Al dentro. You like it? There's a lot of sugar. Oh. Do we have a deal? Yes, yes. The point spread on the Hawks game has gone down drastically. I'm How do you know? I mean, uh, uh, did it happen in the last couple hours? Yes. What does it mean? Is that included in the deal? What are you doing? Calling Al. He's a bookmaker. Oh, how do you know that Al uh, uh, still makes book? Well, he doesn't, really. It's every once in a while people force bets on him. Oh. Al, Miss Mack, tell me, what's a scam on the Hawk game Sunday? Well, where's the money coming from? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. OK, Al, thanks. Where's the money coming from? According to the grapevine, there were two very suspicious bets. Oh? One was for $2. Oh? And the other was for $75,000. Oh. Which one bothers you the most? Both. But the $75,000 bet has some other people nervous. Do you think it could be coming from someone closely associated with the team? I think it has. 
And I think that's why the book is dropped to spread. You know, Mac, I don't see what's wrong with a player betting on his own team to win. Because it's illegal. And it's worse if he bets on the other team. The other team? How could you bet on the other team? Who could control the outcome of a football game? Oh, the coach, the owner, among other people, the quarterback. Billy? Billy. didn't have a police record. But he's gotten two traffic tickets in the last couple of weeks right here. He never caused anybody any trouble. Well, he caused somebody trouble. Traffic division says that he used to park his bike somewhere behind these stores in the alley. So he worked for one of these shop owners, huh? Uh-huh. Question is, which one of the books? Yeah, Commissioner, you know, there's a great delicatessen there. It serves terrific pastrami, great pickles, and sensational sauerkraut. Sergeant, I've had breakfast. Oh, yeah, so have I. Commissioner... If there's a fix-on in this game, it's because somebody wants or needs money. And if what Mrs. McMillan heard at the field is true, there's Harlan Royce, Timber, Lowball, Sandy King, Vic Whalen. Why Vic Whalen? Well, Billy took over his old job. Oh, yeah. Anyway, there's that great deli over there with a the fantastic pastrami, the great pickles, and the... Sensational sauerkraut, and a corn stamp shop, and a pet shop, and a barber shop, and a ladies' lingerie. You ever been in there? Hmm? Ladies' lingerie shop. No. Oh, no, no, the barber shop. Oh, no, sir. You take that. Commissioner, if I'm going to go in there and try to get information without seeming suspicious, i got to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't need a haircut. Oh. Uh, but if I may be so bold, sir, you could. I couldn't. Sally would divorce me. Why? She cuts my hair. But I get my hair cuts from old Vern. Now, what's old Vern going to say when I come in in a couple of weeks with a different haircut? I just can't hurt old Vern. I can understand that. Thank you, sir. I'll see you after I get my hair cut. Hairdresser's name is George Harvard. It is? My card. Your name, sir? Uh, Sergeant. Bill Sergeant. What'll it be, Bill? Trim? Wave set? Curl emphasis? Or a complete redo? Oh, I, I think just a trim would be fine. Oh, you need a redo. Oh, well, how long will that take? It's an important time will fly. But with your shaped head and that large but strong jaw, just reshaping the hair, freeing it, one might say, to a fundamental look will do wonders for you. Oh. Well, how much is something like that? Forty dollars the first visit. Oh. Uh, well, maybe next week, huh? Uh, just a trim. Sir. Pardon me, Bill. George Harvard here. Right. Fine. I'll put you down for that. Uh, uh, just, just once over lightly. I've only taken a small amount, Bill. George Harvard. Right. I'll put you down for it. You know, you're very popular. Some people find me indispensable. I notice that you do haircuts for lots of the hawks. Hair dress, not haircuts. Yes, almost to a man. George Harvard. Right. You've got it. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hey, do you do Billy Benton's hair? No. He's the only one I don't. But maybe someday. You know, with all those football players coming in here, I bet you know a lot about football. Mm -hmm. You know, the odds, things like that. I pick up a little chit-chat. Mm. Hey, uh, you happen to know a place where I could make a bet on the Hawks? Don't you have any friends? I don't bet with friends. Now, that's very wise. Neither do I. Uh, what are you doing? I mean, uh, you're doing more than trimming. Oh, just a little reshaping. I couldn't resist. But you'll love it. Say goodbye to the old Bill Sergeant and hello to your real self. It's, uh, very nice. Thank you, sir. Of course, I'm not really committed to it myself yet, but he said if I didn't like it, I could uh, just comb it out with a little water. But he'd really like me to live with it for a little while, you know what I mean, sir? I mean, it really is, uh, fundamental, isn't it? Uh, even though it does take a little bit of getting used to? What'd you find out? Uh, the, the, the sauerkraut is terrible. Uh, what about you? Oh, we don't have to look any further, sir. It's a bookie joint, all right. You know, if my barber, a guy... Yeah, a guy named uh, George Harvard were to give haircuts to all the people who'd call him, he'd be six feet deep in hair. I mean, I think he's burying his bets in his appointment book. I copped a look at the book, sir, and I found Harlan Royce's name in it. So where does that leave us? I don't know, but I know where it takes us. Yeah, Harlan Royce. Come in. Well, I'm glad you're here. Sit down. I'm plenty upset about this. Who could have done it? We don't know yet, sir. Why didn't anybody see the message? Oh, I know. They were watching your wife. I was watching your wife. Terrible. It's terrible. Uh, do you have a cigarette? No, no, no. Don't give it to me. I always like to smoke when I'm nervous. I've had the commissioner of football on the phone four times today already. Collect. My own announcer is pressuring me. And what I don't understand is who wanted Wizard dead. We think Wizard may have been a bagman. A bagman? Oh, I can't believe. I, 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 I need a cigarette. No, no, no. Uh, no. No, as far as I've heard, he was a nice kid that used to hang around with Billy and the team and did errands. Excuse me, sir. Do you happen to know George Harvard? Well, of course I know George Harvard. He's my barber. As a matter of fact, I'm due there later on this afternoon. You ought to go to him. He's marvelous. As a matter of fact, you could use a redo. I just had one, sir. Oh? Oh, yeah. See, that's pretty... Uh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, that's terrific. Well, thank you, sir. Mr. Royce, what do you know about the syndicate and its connections, if any, with the Hawks? There aren't any. If there were, I'd have to report them to the commissioner of football and to the police. I just paid one million smokers, smackers, for Billy Benton. Do you think I'm going to jeopardize that by not playing football according to the rules? Cigarette? Uh, you said not to give you one, sir. Right. You give me one. I don't smoke. I don't use them. Did you get those cigarettes yet? You told me not to, no matter what you said. You're fired. Where were you yesterday when Wizard was murdered? 
I was here. Well, we checked that out, sir. You said you were, but you weren't. I don't mean here. I mean I was with the technicians. There was some problem with the scoreboard. I had a pack around here someplace. Do you have any idea who might have attacked Wizard? Well, I'm not going to single anybody out. That's your job. My job is to run this office and to try to find some damn cigarettes. Yes, sir. Did the cigarettes come yet? You just fired me, Mr. Royce. Can you believe that? You just can't find any decent help nowadays. thing. He's definitely trying to quit smoking. Commissioner! Commissioner, if I don't come up with something on who killed Wizard first, I could lose a good job. Uh, not on the record. Okay, off the record. Sergeant, tell him our theory. Uh, our theory is that Wizard was assaulted with a deadly weapon by a person or persons unknown to the detriment of his well-being. We believe the assailant to be clever, ruthless, and so far invisible. Stay down. I am down. Sandy, that shot was meant for you. Come on, Enright. Listen, please. Things for sure. Whoever it is has got to be out of breath. Did anyone just run in here? Yeah. We all did. We just finished our wind sprints. Anyone in here have a permit for a gun? A gun without a permit? Blowball's got one. Well, it's an old gun I use for a starter's pistol. Get it. Sure. It's not there. I guess I got my story. Hawks announcer shot at in parking lot. The assailant is clever, ruthless, and invisible. Hey, wait a minute. I lent it to somebody. Now, who was it? Uh, Billy, I lent it to you, remember? Now, what would I want with the pistol? Good question. Got an answer? Sure, I have an answer. I never barred it. Hey, what are you trying to pull, lowball? Get a couple of men down here and look for that gun. Commissioner, can you spare a third man? I'd like some protection. That's standard procedure. How much do you think Sandy knows? I don't know. You know. I talked to him and I still don't know. You know. You're just saying you don't know because you don't want me to know what it is you know. I don't know. And if I did know, you know that... I'm not going to get caught up in that again. Why would anyone want to kill Sandy? That wouldn't change the odds or the point spread, would it? Mm, no, I shouldn't think so. What are the odds now, do you know? Ten to one. Ten to one? Ten to one, I'll be asleep in one minute. Oh! oh. What's the matter? Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, I grabbed my toe. 
Can I help you? You're turning red. I'm glad we're going to bed early. What time is it? 20 after 9. We haven't done this since when? Since never. Oh. Long, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> oh, no! Well, if that's the way you feel, I won't propose what I had in mind. Oh, no, that wasn't an oh, no for you. That was an oh, no, oh, no. I've got to get in touch with Janet. Why? The Stans are having a party for the team tonight, and I promised them that we'd be there. What am I going to tell Janet? Uh, tell them the truth. The truth? Of course. There's nothing like the truth. I think she can handle it. Hi, Janet. Sally. Uh, uh, yes, that's, that's what I was calling you about. I'm really sorry about tonight. You won't believe what happened. Mac tore a ligament in his leg, and I had to take him down to an emergency hospital. We're not going to possibly be able to make it. Well, there's nothing like the truth. Well, there was nothing like it. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Janet, no, no. No, it's not that bad, no. Uh, no, Janet, really, no, it's not, it's not that bad. He's not in bed or anything, no. Janet, listen, Janet, we'll be right over. Boy, did I handle that. How much of a limp do you want? Well, I think it could be a little... Oh, Mac. Hello? Yes, he's right here. Just a moment. And? Right. Hello? Hello, Commissioner. Did I wake you? No, Sergeant. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I mean, uh, I just thought you'd like to know, sir, that we found the gun in Vic Whalen's locker. It had Billy Benton's fingerprints on it. Pick me up. I'll be downstairs. That was about Billy, wasn't it? Yes. Please don't say anything. Let me say it. You've got a lot on your mind, so I'm going to go to the Stanton's party by myself. And you and Enright can go do whatever it is that you've got to do. A, you are a great wife. B, I love you very much. And C, what are you going to tell Janet? Oh, I'm going to tell her the truth. I believe it. Well, I'll think of something. No limp. You're going with Enright. Are you sure this is Billy's apartment? Of course it is, sir. I checked it out. I thought this was Billy Benton's apartment. It is. I'm Vic Whalen. You know, the old quarterback. I didn't know you were roommates. We're not. I had some trouble with my wife. Billy said I could spend the night. I'd like to talk to him. May we come in? He's not in right now. Doesn't that violate curfew? When you think of it, I guess it does. Listen, Vic, where'd he go? Well, I don't know. We made a call and split. Hmm. Well, I'll check and see if he used the house phone. Vic, we found the gun that was fired at Sandy in your locker. Well, I don't know anything about any gun in my locker. There was no gun there when I left the field. I never shot anybody in my life. Where in my locker? In your shoe. Well, somebody put it there after I left the field. Your signature was right next to the message on the football. I don't know anything about any message. If this is an attempted murder investigation, you haven't told me my rights. Nothing I've said can be used. Nobody asked you anything. Operator, this is Sergeant Enright of San Francisco Police. Could you please tell me where the last outgoing phone call was made from this extension? Thank you. Thank you, Vic. We'll see you later. Uh, no, sir. This time I go first. Harvard's work area is over there. I don't usually get tackled from behind. Don't touch me. 
you're a cop. I'd like my hair cut back. I don't take care of cops. Yeah, I can see why. I shouldn't have wasted my talents All right, on... all right. Let's begin at the beginning, shall we? Any volunteers? Yeah, he wanted a bigger tip. Why'd you call him? Personal. Money? I don't like what you're thinking, Commissioner. I don't like it either. Why'd you come down here? He's been spreading rumors around that I'm betting against my own team. Is it true? Now, wouldn't it be freaky to admit, even if it were true, that I had financial dealings with a bookie? You're gonna call me a bookie. I'm gonna get you for this. Now, that's a very stupid thing to say in front of witnesses. Relax. We already know you're a bookie. You think I'm a bookman and charge me? Take me in or let, let me go. We're aware of the options. Sit down. Shut up. What was the fight about? Billy? That really wasn't a fight. He got in a cheap shot with his hair dryer. Level with me, Billy. Commissioner, I am leveling with you. Why would I possibly want to be involved with the guy that makes a book? Because you're trying to make some tax-free loot. You laid $75,000 against your own team. Hey, I'm clean. Now, if you're so scared, you call off all the bets, man. And you keep your big mouth shut. You understand? Right. That's what this thing is all about. He thinks I'm dumping the game. No way. Did you take a $75,000 bet? I don't take bets. Then what makes you so sure that one of the team plays the bet? Where do you get your information? Book him. You're coming with me, Billy. Well, I wouldn't touch your head again if... Come on. If... I don't know where she keeps those band-aids. I looked at them. Medicine chest in the bathroom drawer in the kitchen sink. Ah. Hi, Mac. Oh, the party was awful. After I got there, everybody was gone. Billy. What happened to your forehead? It's bleeding. Where do you keep oh. the band-aids? Oh, here. I'll get them for you. Do you always keep your band-aids in the ice box? They feel better when they're cold. I suppose you keep your coffee in the medicine cabinet. Upstairs I do. Downstairs I keep it in the coffee canister. That must make it difficult to find. <laughs> you look like you've been in a fight. Yeah, I was. You'd never know it. Is everything all right? How about an answer? Well, not really. Ah, uh, there's this guy out there that thinks that I'm a crook. I'd punch him in the nose. Uh, he did. Hey, this is really pretty. Where was it taken? On our honeymoon. Where'd you go? To bed. Coffee's cooking in there. Yeah. Is he in real trouble, Mac? Mm hmm. I take my coffee with no cream and no two sugars. You're lucky it's ready. Why am I really in trouble? Your fingerprints were found on Lobal's gun. How do you explain it? I can't. I don't know what to say. I've never even seen the gun before. I had no reason to shoot Sandy. Do I? Yeah, I really appreciate you not booking me. That's exactly what somebody wants. If you're booked, you'll be suspended. You won't be able to play on Sunday. Wow. How do I thank you? <laughs> Make sure I'm right. Well, you're right. What I don't understand is how could Billy's fingerprints get on a gun that he's never seen? Brandy? Come here. There's another question that nobody has answered. Well, I have a question I think can be answered. Uh, where's the... Uh... Oh, uh, straight back to the right. Excuse me. Yeah. Everything's too pat, Sally. I think Billy's being framed. Which was, was his friend that got his fingerprints on it? The book he said it was his bet against his own team? I'm glad you believe in Billy. Mm hmm. There's something about him brings out the paternal instinct. Maternal. Paternal. Maternal, too. I thought to women he was a sex symbol. Well, maybe to other women he's a sex symbol, but to me, Billy is, uh, well, he's simply, uh... Sex symbol. Well, he is rugged and handsome and good-looking, but you know that's not my type. Wow, I have to go. Uh, could you call me a cab? Sure, you're a cab. Oh, want to take a drive? I do nothing better. Because I don't want to put you on. No trouble. Save us tailing you home. <laughs> Sorry for the inconvenience. Battery in my car was dead. I didn't know it. You know, I kind of like this. It's like, it's like being in the huddle, except with much prettier people. Thanks again. Good night, Billy. Good night. Good night, Billy.
talk? Mm-hmm. I talk. How was the party? Not very good. By the time I got there, everybody who counts had gone home. Who counts? The bachelors. I thought most of the team was married. Most of the team is married, but there's a couple of groovy bachelors. Larry Sloan's a bachelor, Vic Whalen's a bachelor, Billy Benton's no, no, a bachelor. No, 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 Vic Whalen's married. No, he's a bachelor. No, 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 he's married. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Uh-uh. Yeah, he must be. He... I read the programs. I ought to know who's bachelor. Well, he just told me that... We're going back to Billy's. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. You all right? Yeah. They beat up Vic pretty bad. I better go help him. You all right? Oh, I'm all right. After you dropped me off, Vic Willen was asleep in the bed, so I figured why bug him. So I slip on the couch, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose in the bed. Commissioner, excuse me, but George Harvard made bail. Naturally. Put a tail on him. Naturally. Oh, and uh, Vic Whalen tried to phone you a little over an hour ago. I wonder why. Well, the way I figure it is that those four guys went after Bill. He got Vic Whalen by mistake, probably to ensure a bet of $75,000. Doctor, did we see him? Sorry, Commissioner. Whalen's condition is critical. You can't talk to him now. It may take 24 to 48 hours. Well, if there's any change, be sure and let me know. Of course. Thank you. Billy. Looks like you're the Hawks' only quarterback now. Without you, they haven't got a game. Uh, now I guess you'll find out if I'm on the level or not. Yeah, I guess we will. Here's another thing to think about. Whoever placed that bet intends to win. So if you are on the level, you're in the way. No word on those men who beat up Whalen? Well, keep trying. How many men can we spare this afternoon? All right, I want double that number. And walkie-talkies. I want two men on each bench, one man acting as linemen, one man in the locker room, and at least 50 men in the stands. Right. Ed Wright's meeting us at the field. I hate to see you so worried. Oh. Do you think it's going to be cold today? Kind of. That cold? This cold. Gotcha.
sergeant. I trained recruits, you know, in military courtesy and tactics, and, uh, marksmanship. <laughs> I was the best shot in my unit with a rifle or a pistol. Kids really ate that up. And then after that, I kind of knocked around until... Uh... I'm sorry, Lowball, but that's all the time we have left on the pregame show. Folks, this is Sandy King, and we'll be right back to the kickoff after a word from our sponsor. Car one. Anyone named McMillan here? We both are. McMillan? Yes? Right. Thank you, Doctor. Vic Whalen's conscious. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's important. Bayview Hospital, Brady. Mind missing the kickoff? Yes. Do I have a choice? Nope. Then I don't mind. It's a long end over end, and the ball is taken by Rich on the 15. He runs it back and is down on the 29 yard line. Billy Benton brings the Hawks out of the huddle for the first offensive play of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's unbelievable. On the very first offensive play of the game, Billy Benson faded back for a pass, unexplainably stumbled, and threw a soft blooper about 10 feet into the air. It was intercepted by Bob Ridgely, who ran it all the way for a touchdown after only 54 seconds of play. It's 6-0, Curlers. Come on, Billy. Lowball wanted to kill Sandy King, it was his business. Sandy's a bum. Kill his mother to get a story. Anything to keep his job. When Billy got involved, I tried to reach you, but... Then those guys busted in on me. Why did you tell me you were married? Well, I moved in with Billy because I was worried about the rumors. I wanted to help him. I really don't know why those guys had it in for me. What makes you think they were after you? They said my name. Does Billy usually fall asleep when he gets a massage? With Lowald, we all do. Anything else? How's the game going? Here. Got it? Doc said no excitement, and I'm not listening. To the game? To the doc. Good boy. <laughs> Hope you feel better, babe. Thanks, babe. Bill Benton, fading back to pass. We've been operating on the wrong premise. They wanted to get rid of the backup quarterback before the game and get rid of Billy during the game. Team out for third down with a long four to go. He's fading back to pass. Cox his arm. Fires way over the head of Davis. Have you been listening to the game, Brady? Yes, sir. Billy's been playing the worst game of his career. He made two fumbles, and we're getting clobbered. You see, Sally? Step on it, Brady. Why did you ask about Billy sleeping on the table, Mac? Because I think that's how Lobo put Billy's fingerprints on that gun. Then he's innocent. Maybe. Maybe not. He's playing so badly, it looks like he's throwing the game. Enright, I want Lobo arrested for the attempted murder of Sandy King. Yes, I know the game looks bad. I'll see you later. All right, here we go. Hawks are over the ball. Benton calling signals now. He's straight back. Back. He stepped out of the pocket. He, he's thrown for a 70-yard loss. Well, this is certainly not Billy Benton's day. 
The score of 10-0, the Hawks are being outplayed in every department. Statistically, in yardage, in passes, recovered fumbles, it's the drillers' game all the way. Well, Billy's two for 17, one for no gain. Halftime's coming up. He can't be throwing the game, Mac. He just can't be. Come on, Commissioner. You know what it is? Nerves. I'm tight. I'm tense. We're down by 10. That's nothing. Let's score two touchdowns easy. We'll get him in the second half. I got myself all together now. I feel great. Commissioner, low ball's missing. Anybody here seen Lobo Lewis? He came in at the start of the half, right? Yeah, but I haven't seen him since. Hey, Commissioner, I've got to talk to the team. The halftime show is almost finished, and I'm running out of time now. How about it? Go ahead. Put heard all the men in the stadium. Stick. I believe Billy. I believe he's playing it straight. I believe he wants to win. So whoever's maneuvered all this is set for the last part of his plan. Getting rid of Billy. It's one minute and 20 seconds into the second half. Billers have the ball on third down and 10. Hallowell goes to Mason, sweeping the weak side. It's very close to a first down. Personally, I don't think he made it. And right, can you hear me? Out. I hear you, sir. Everyone in position. Hey, uh, Roger. The score is still 10 to nothing. Drillers. And they're about two, well, inches short of a first down. It looks, looks like they're going to go for it. think he made it. And that's the ball for the hook. Henderson, get down closer to the field. Would you be careful, Billy? I got ten other men. I gotta go. Good luck. say with a new Billy Benton fighting hard. He's recovered from that uh, somewhat uncoordinated first half and he's been playing some really heads-up football. These last eight minutes he has done beautifully.
and someone is running out on the field, a young lady. I can't make out who it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's crazy, but a young lady has that's walked no out lady, on the that's field. That's my wife. She is down there now. what happened yet, but a young lady did run onto the field, and it appears that Billy Benton was uh, stricken while playing. They're carrying him off the field now, but a tragedy for the Hawks. out of the team water bottle and so a little later I was looking at the Hawks and they looked a little thirsty so I gave them some water from the same bottle. Mac, when I went back to my seat and I looked at the Hawks, they were dead. Enright, Billy was poisoned. Find that bottle immediately and get it down to the hospital. They might be able to come up with an antidote. See if any of the other players drank out of that bottle. Henderson, I want the names and addresses of the entire team. I want every one of them questioned and I mean everyone. Hang on, they'll do all they can. I got along this far. I'm sure I'll be fine. And that's the way it ended, ladies and gentlemen, with the Hawks losing 24 to 17. I've just had word that Billy Benton is in the hospital. This reporter will bring you uh, bulletins on his condition as they come in. This is Sandy King. Closing his post-game show on a blue day. Signing off now from Redwood Field. There were 65,000 people there cheering and roaring and having a good time. They don't care who lives or dies, Mac. They don't care who gets hurt. None of them knew what happened, Sally. If they did, I'm sure a lot of them would care. I know. I guess you're right. It's just that Billy's so terrific. McMillan. Right? The barbershop. George Harvard's been found dead. was shot from the front at very close range, and that's all we know. Anyone hear the shot? Any witnesses? Not that we know of, but we did find this. Why are you handling it? Well, we've examined it, sir, but no fingerprints. Well, it's a marker. Yes, sir. $75,000. Whoever it was collected his bet and killed Harvard so he couldn't be identified. All right, check the whereabouts of every known suspect at the time of death. Right, sir. I'm going to make you something to eat. That'll make you feel better. I'm not hungry. You haven't even heard what I have to offer. A melted cheese sandwich with bacon and a hot vodka bouillon. Egg sandwich. Egg sandwich. Brown bread? Kaiser. You've got it. Cat, put it together. You don't have to, darling. I'm doing it. Well, it's not that. Oh, well, we don't know who placed the bet, so we can't start there. Well, we don't know who killed Wizard or George Harvard yet, so we can't start there. Well, let's start here. No Kaiser. Whole wheat. No whole wheat. Brown bread. Brown bread. You've got it. Well, we don't know why Lobo wanted to kill Sandy unless he's just some kind of a nut and he wanted to kill anybody. I don't do that. I don't either. Harlan Royce, maybe. Sandy, maybe. Timber, maybe. Rye? Maybe. Vic Whalen, maybe. No, that's impossible. He was in the hospital. Doesn't make sense. Let's start at the beginning. Good idea. Lobo found Wizard's body. If he were in on it, he'd try to conceal the body, wouldn't he? Well, Mac, maybe things just don't look or sound like what it is they look or sound like. Billy! Relax. I am relaxed. Did you always put the eggs in the sink and the cells in the bowl? Isn't everyone? Well, I don't. 
Your mother does. Hello? Yes, this is he. I see. Okay, thank you very much. Billy, he's going to be all right. And you saved him. Wait a minute. Look like, sound like. Sally, I think you're on to something. Lowball. That tape interview, come on. What tape interview? And then after that, I kind of knocked around until... Uh... This is the one we wanted. Thanks, Jimmy. Good, Commissioner. I've got to go watch the gate. When you're ready to leave, just let me know, and I'll be right there. Fine. Right. See you later. Let me hear this one again. Well, after I made sergeant, I trained recruits, you know, in military courtesy and tactics and uh, marksmanship. <laughs> I was the best shot in my unit with a rifle or a pistol. That's it. Really ate... What's it? The guy's a crack shot. When he shot at Sandy, he missed. Right. A crack shot only misses when he's supposed to miss. Well, why bother shooting if you're going to miss? Frame somebody else? Like Billy? To have him arrested. Taken out of the game. Who hired the guys to beat up on Vic? The same guy who arranged the frame. And who killed Wizard because Wizard must have found out who he was after he placed the bed. Police emergency, this is Commissioner McMillan. Sergeant Enright, please. Try the lab. Enright. Yeah, I'm glad I found you. No, I'm at the stadium. Look, pick up Sandy King, suspicion of murder. Make you some dinner. What do you got? Well, anything but eggs. <laughs> Sally, run! Run! Who's walking? floor. Sir, but the gate was locked. And next time, sir, you should let me go after the bad guys, and you stay with the good guys. Yes, Sergeant, we'll have to work that out. Here, 
Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You all right? Mm-hmm. Commissioner, one of our men found Lowball down at the railroad yard, and he was very drunk. But he said he missed on purpose when he took that shot. Oh, yeah? You mean you had that figured out? No, Sally did. Oh. Well, maybe you can tell me why Sandy King acted the way he did. Sure. Um... You know, I bet you Mac could tell you better. Sandy King was afraid for his life. He bet 75,000 bucks against a syndicate and see what happens. It's kill or be killed. He didn't have the money to pay off. He was desperate about his job. That's what Wizard found out. That's why Wizard's dead. Let's go home. Let's go home. Looks like it's out of order. How do you like that? I feel terrific. I feel terrific, too. I don't feel too bad myself. And I know I'll be ready for next week's game. As we wrap this up, Billy, what about the Hawks' chances for the rest of the season? Oh, win or lose, I think the Hawks are a dynamite team. What I've been through, I'll be on top of it from now on. I owe my life to two very beautiful people. You mean Commissioner and Mrs. McMillan? Right on. They know how I feel about them. Good night, Sally. Good night, Meg. Good night, Billy. Good night, Billy. Good night, Sally. Good night, Matt.
चल बन हाथ से बन जान के
मां शारदा